Rowan sat in the university library, hunched over an anatomy textbook. The images of muscle tissues, bone structures, and organ systems were now as familiar to her as the back of her hand. She had spent the past few years absorbing every detail of mortuary science, yet as her fingers brushed over the pages, she couldn't help but recall the peculiar circumstances she left behind in Jonestown. Her phone vibrated, dragging her back to the present. It was a message from her mother, another strange death in town. Animal attack, they say. I wish you were here. Chills went down Rowan's spine. Animal attacks were becoming oddly frequent back home, and they all bore an uncanny similarity. Unexplained fang marks on the victims. She sighed, torn between her present and her past, the undeniable facts of science and the unnerving mysteries of her hometown. As the months passed and graduation drew near, these thoughts would often circle back like wolves to a kill. Finally, the day came. Donning her cap and gown, Rowan couldn't shake off a sense of foreboding. As her peers celebrated, her mind was already miles away, back in Jonestown, where a series of animal attacks had left the town in a state of paranoid dread. Despite the promise of a fresh start, she knew she had to return to unravel the growing enigma that clung to her past like a shroud. Weeks after returning to Jonestown, Rowan stood in her office at the local funeral home, staring at the latest body to come in. Another mysterious death, another victim with inexplicable fang marks. Her concern had grown steadily since her return, and today it got the best of her. She decided to consult with Sheriff Dalton, a gruff, aging man who had watched her and her friends grow up. Sheriff, these don't look like any animal attacks I've ever seen. Rowan pressed, her arms folded as she leaned against the wooden desk cluttering the sheriff's small office. I've been studying the autopsy reports, and something doesn't add up. Dalton sighed. Rowan, I know it's troubling, but what are you suggesting? We've had animal control out every night, and that's just it, she interrupted. What if it's not an animal we're dealing with? He eyed her skeptically. You think it's a person behind these attacks? I don't know what to think. Rowan admitted, but I need to find out. Something's happening in this town, something we don't understand. Dalton sighed again, this time pulling open a desk drawer and handing her an envelope. I was going to bring this by the funeral home later. New case, fresh body found near the old lumber mill. Her eyes met his, the lumber mill, near the abandoned mansion. Yeah. Why, something you're not telling me. No, she hesitated. I'll look into it, though. That night, armed with more than just her education in mortuary science, Rowan trekked through the woods, her flashlight cutting through the dense fog. Her footsteps were muffled by the undergrowth as she approached the ominous, long-abandoned mansion near the old lumber mill. Its derelict state had fueled countless ghost stories among the townsfolk, but she was uninterested in myths. She sought facts, evidence, anything that could explain the horrible deaths. But what she found was beyond any rational explanation. Inside the mansion, her flashlight beam landed on a figure lurking in the shadows. Lauren. Her breath caught. He was a spectre from a life she had left behind, yet here he was, more haunting than any ghost. Lauren. Her voice trembled. Before she could react, he was upon her. His fangs sank into her neck, a sharp but oddly intoxicating pain surging through her. Then, as abruptly as he attacked, Loren pulled away. His eyes met hers. They were filled with torment, almost begging for her understanding. With a trembling hand, he bit into his wrist and offered it to her. Compelled by an irresistible force, Rowan drank. As Loren's blood mingled with hers, she felt an overwhelming rush of sensations. Her wounds healing, her senses sharpening, her reality shifting. Loren vanished, retreating further into the mansion's endless shadows. Rowan was left standing alone, her flesh immortal, yet her soul burdened with questions that seemed increasingly unanswerable. So this was her new reality, infinitely more complex and laden with uncertainties than her old life. The mysteries she sought to unravel had only deepened, and she couldn't shake the feeling that they were just the beginning. Watching Rowan crumple to the floor, Lorraine's instincts screamed at him to flee, to disappear into the night as he'd done so many times before. But he couldn't. This was Rowan. This was different. Grimacing. He lifted her carefully, her head lolling back as if in a deep, impenetrable sleep. 
He laid her down on a dusty, age-worn couch, tacking an old blanket around her. She looked almost peaceful, but he knew the violent metamorphosis that was about to consume her would be anything but. He took a seat in a dilapidated armchair across from her, watching intently as her face twitched and her body trembled. He knew the anguish she was enduring, the fire that felt like it was consuming every cell, the tearing sensation as though your very DNA was being rewritten. It was a hell beyond imagination, and he condemned her to it. As he sat there, an awful quiet overcame the room. Loring cocked his head, listening intently. Her heartbeat, that rhythmic, life-affirming sound, had stopped. His face tightened in a grimace of both self-loathing and sorrow. Rowan was reborn, but at the cost of her human warmth, her beating heart. The very things that he'd found himself missing in his isolated, eternal night. The agony of the transformation was over for her, yet it was only just beginning for him. A silence filled the room, void of heartbeats, and he pondered whether he'd given her a curse or a gift, or both, or the unanswered questions. The long nights of soul-searching seemed to coalesce into this one moment. Here they were, creatures of the night, bound by something far stronger and more mysterious than either could have imagined. She stirred, her eyes flicking open to reveal the iridescent glow of their newfound nature. He wondered what she saw when she looked at him now. Was he a monster? A savior? Perhaps he was both. The one thing was set. The paths divergent for so long had entwined once more, and the unraveling of that twisted thread would shape the nights to come. She woke up feeling a rush of sensation she'd never experienced before. Enhanced vision, hearing, and a profound craving she couldn't name. Rowan's eyes snapped open, locking onto Lauren, who was sitting there, staring back at her. How dare you? She shoved him away with a newfound strength, lunging off the couch, her eyes ablaze with crimson fury. Saved your life, Lauren said, but she cut him off. Saved me. You call this salvation? She spat out, gesturing to herself to the room, to the reality that now imprisoned her. I never asked for this. Ignoring him, she stormed toward the mansion's entrance, her hands trembling as she reached for the doorknob. Daylight seeped in as she pulled the door open, and the moment her skin touched the sun's rays, an agonizing pain seared through her. She screamed, retreating back into the darkness, collapsing onto the floor, her body shaking. Lorraine took a step toward her, but she shot him a glance that could kill. Don't you dare touch me. Time seemed to stretch on forever. The sun made its journey across the sky, but Rowan could only see it as a monstrous force, a betrayal by the very fabric of nature. As night finally fell, Lawrence spoke, his voice low. Come with me. He led her through the woods to the home she knew so well, the place where they'd shared unspoken feelings and countless memories. Now it felt like a stranger's home. Inside, he guided her to his bedroom and gently gestured for her to sit on the bed. Rowan took the farthest corner, pulling her knees to her chest, refusing to look at him directly. Lauren sat in a chair across from her, respecting her unwillingness to be near. Rowan's eyes met his, but they were different. Crimson hues filled with hatred, anger, and a deep-seated resentment. She'd entered a new realm of existence against her will and the weight of that reality lay heavy between them. She could feel a new kind of tension in the air, charged, electric, and undoubtedly dangerous. This was no longer just about unspoken love or lost friendship. This was about life altered beyond recognition, about irreversible choices and the heavy cost of eternal life. What would they become now? Enemies, reluctant allies in a world neither asked to be part of. As they sat in silence, Rowan knew one thing for certain. They were bound by their new dark nature, in a dance neither could escape, no matter how far they ran from each other. You're a monster, Rowan hissed, her eyes locking onto Lauren's, her words charged with every ounce of betrayal and rage she felt. You turned me into this, this abomination. You took my life away. His face tightened. It was the only way to save you. Save me. She scoffed, bitterness lacing her voice. I'd rather have died. At least then I would have been free of this. Curse. For a moment, Lauren's eyes clouded with something indescribable, caught between regret and defiant conviction. Then he rose from his chair, glaring down at her. You think I wanted this? 
for either of us, you have no idea what it's like to be caught in between worlds. Without another word, he stormed out of the room, slamming the door behind him. Rowan was left alone, sitting on the edge of the bed where countless layers of unspoken sentiments had accumulated over the years. A new layer had just been added, one of unimaginable darkness. She wept, her tears tasting different now, more saline, tinged with an unfamiliar bitterness. Hours crawled by the ticking of the clock, now unusually loud to her heightened senses. Finally, the door creaked open. Lauren returned, but he wasn't alone. Her eyes widened in horror as she recognized Teresa, her old friend from high school, bound and gagged, fear etched into her eyes. Feed, Lauren growled, a darkness taking over his features that Rowan had never seen before. He pushed Teresa onto the floor in front of her. Rowan recoiled, shaking her head vehemently. No, I will not. A low growl erupted from Lauren's throat. You need to feed to survive. I said no. Rowan's eyes fled crimson with an unfamiliar energy, her whole body shaking. Lorraine's eyes met hers for a split second, and in that brief moment, she saw a sliver of the man she used to know. It vanished almost immediately, replaced by the hardened shell of the creature he'd become. His fangs elongated and he sank them into Teresa's neck, draining the life out of her as Rowan watched in horror, her friend's body going limp. Lorraine dropped the lifeless body to the ground, that's how we survive, he said, his voice empty, his eyes devoid of any emotion. Rowan felt something within her break. He had crossed a line and in doing so, had pulled her unwillingly across it as well. A new haunting realization settled upon her. They were tied by a bond darker than any she could have ever imagined, bound to tread a path soaked in moral complexities neither was prepared for. The room was thick with silence weighed down by the unspeakable act that had just occurred and the unfathomable abyss that had opened up between them. Where could they possibly go from here? Rowan retreated to Lorraine's bedroom, turning the lock behind her even though she knew its inadequacy as a barrier. Her hands trembled as she sat on the bed, her body stiffening at each sound filtering through the old wooden door. She hoped to drown out the images of what had just transpired in the living room, but her thoughts kept circling back to her friend lifeless, her face as pale as a ghost. An hour of silence swept through the house, each tick of the clock punctuating her isolation. It was as though time itself was stretching, elongating her agony. Finally, she heard footsteps approaching the door. The soft knock broke the silence. It's me, Loren murmured, his voice strangely subdued. Loren stood outside the locked bedroom door, a goblet filled with warmed animal blood in his hand. During the hour of quiet, he had wrestled with himself, with the creature he had become, and the line he had just crossed. Carefully, he knocked on the door. It's me, he said softly a second attempt to have her unlock the door, an odd sense of vulnerability clinging to his voice. Rowan hesitated for a moment, considering maintaining her self-imposed isolation, but the curiosity, or maybe it was the last shred of connection she felt, prompted her to unlock the door. Lauren entered a goblet in his hands. You need to drink this. Your body is new to this life. It will be demanding sustenance, he said, his words tinged with a cold formality. Rowan looked up at him, searching for any vestige of the man she had once known, but finding only a shell. Tentatively, she accepted the goblet, her fingers brushing against his colder-than-death hand. She drank the liquid, and for a moment, a semblance of her former vitality returned. She felt energized, more like herself than she had since the night in the mansion. See, not so bad, is it? Lauren said as she put down the empty goblet. His next words froze her newfound warmth. It's only a matter of time before you become like me, a realist in a world where idealism is a fool's paradise. The room's atmosphere thickened, tension coiling around them. A realist? The how you justified? How you justify becoming a killer? His eyes met hers, the clash of their gazes like the meeting of tectonic plates. We do what we have to in order to survive, he responded, his voice a near whisper. The room fell into a stifling silence, a heavy stillness that seemed to expand, filling the corners and shadows with unasked questions and unspoken accusations. The divide between them had always been there, subtle yet persistent, but now it had widened into an abyss, as immeasurable as it was profound. 
Rowan's eyes narrowed, her voice icy. Survive. You mean by stripping us of everything that makes us human? Lauren clenched his jaw. You think I wanted this for you? For us? It doesn't matter what you wanted, she snapped. You made a choice for me that I can never undo. Lorraine felt as if her words were lacerating him, each syllable a razor blade. I've made many choices, Rowan, but one choice I never had was how I felt about you. I love you. His confession hung in the air, a fragile and unsteady thing, as if awaiting judgment. His words reached her like a punch to the gut. She had waited so long to hear him say that, but now they tasted bitter. Love, you think that gives you the right to decide my fate? I didn't decide your fate. I saved your life, he argued. You cursed me, she retorted. The tension in the room was so palpable it felt as though the walls might crumble. Lauren glanced at the window. Dawn was approaching. The sun will be up soon. We need to close the curtains. I don't care about the sun. I care about her. You owe her a proper burial. Rowan's voice shook as she said it. Fine, I'll do it, Lauren seed. His eyes a darker shade of red. But you have to see what the sun can do to us. Rowan followed Lauren, grabbing his hooded jacket from the coat rack and pulling the hood over her head before stepping into the field behind his home. He began digging a grave, his movements quick but laborious. As the sun crept above the horizon, Lauren's skin started to smoke, then blister. Rowan watched, horrified yet fascinated, as Lauren fought against his body's betrayal. See what you would face. You see the curse you think I've put upon you? Lauren snarled through clenched teeth, trying to finish the grave even as the sun wounded him. He glanced at Rowan, her face as cold as the morning air. Yes, Lauren. I see the curse not just in the sun, but in you. In what you've become. You've made me a part of your damned world without asking. Lauren's eyes clouded as he filled the grave, each shovel full an admission of his own monstrousness. Then hate me if you must, but survive, Rowan. That's what we do. With that, Lauren staggered back toward the house, his flesh still smoldering, each step in agony. As he went, he felt Rowan's gaze on his back, a look that mingled repulsion and pity, love and loss. Rowan stood at the edge of the field, staring at the newly disturbed soil where her friend now lay buried. She turned back towards the house, her thoughts drifting to her family. Her mom, her sisters, could she ever see them again? Can I go home? Can I see them? The question came out more fragile than she intended. Still reeling from the sun's assault on his skin, exhaled sharply. It's not a good idea. You're different now. Dangerous. Stick to phone calls, video chats. Keep your distance. Keep my distance. Rowan's voice escalated, her eyes flickering a dangerous shade of red. You talk as if I'm some sort of ticking bomb. In a way, you are, Lorraine replied. Your new instincts, they can be overwhelming. You have to learn control before. Before he could finish, Rowan's rushed toward him into the house as her hand shot out, her newfound strength propelling him with alarming force. He crashed through the living room wall, a cloud of dust and debris erupting around him. Seeing Lauren pick himself up as if nothing had happened, Rowan felt a momentary pang of regret, immediately swallowed by a tide of defiant anger. Lauren dusted off his clothes and picked up a cigarette from the table, lighting it with a sense of resigned calm. He took a long drag, his eyes meeting Rowan's for just a moment, a cocktail of emotions brewing between them. Anger, regret, something deeper. Fine, he muttered, smoke curling from his lips as he spoke. Get your control, Rowan. Learn it the hard way if you must. With that, Loren walked into the guest room, slamming the door behind him. The sound reverberated through the house, a physical punctuation mark to their escalating emotional war. Rowan stood alone in the wreckage of the living room, the ruins around her reflecting the turmoil within. Lauren had shut himself away, but the walls couldn't contain the questions that swirled in her mind. Who had she become? What had Lauren turned her into? She clenched her fists, struggling with the twin desires to scream or break something but neither would answer her questions or ease the profound sense of loss that gnawed at her soul. Loren may have given her eternal life, but at that moment she felt impossibly fragile. Her thoughts drifted back to her family, her old life, a world that she had been violently torn from. 
In the silence that followed, Rowan sat down amid the broken furniture and splintered wood, her eyes vacant. Lauren's earlier words echoed in her mind. Then hate me if you must, but survive, Rowan. That's what we do, survive. It seemed like a cruel joke now, a life devoid of everything she had once cherished. Rowan was left alone to ponder her new reality in the echoing emptiness of the house. Rowan pulled her phone from her pocket, her thumb hovering over the screen as she hesitated. With a sigh, she opened her photo gallery, her eyes scanning through the memories. There she was with her family on the last Christmas where things felt normal, all smiles and winter coats. And there was Mark, her late brother, his eyes crinkled in laughter. Her heart ached as she stumbled upon pictures of her with Lauren, back when things were simpler, more innocent. She set the phone back down, standing up from the shattered remnants of the living room. As she wandered through the house, she paused in front of a closet, pulling it open to reveal an assortment of Lauren's clothes. She took a deep breath, her hands trembling as she grabbed one of his shirts. Holding it against her face for a moment, she felt a pang of something. Loss, nostalgia, a heartbreaking yearning. Rowan took the shirt with her as she headed for the bathroom. The shower felt like a hollow ritual, the water sluicing over her but doing nothing to cleanse the emotional grime. She put on Lauren's shirt, its fabric still holding a faint scent of him, and returned to the living area. Loren was acutely aware of Rowan's presence outside the guest room. The scent permeated the air, drawing him into a bittersweet memory lane he wished to avoid. His eyes remained closed, but sleep was a stranger to him now. The silence was tense, thick enough to cut through. Finally, the door creaked open. He could sense her standing there, peeking in. Not receiving any objection from Lauren, Rowan stepped inside the room. She looked at him, his figure stretched out on the bed, his eyes closed but his body tense. Was this what vampires did during the daylight hours? Is this how they rested? She moved cautiously, laying down beside him on the bed. For a long moment, there was silence. Then Lauren spoke, his voice tinged with a cold hardness she hadn't heard before. Why are you here, beside me? Why lay with a monster? She felt her chest tighten, Lauren's words amplifying the cacophony of conflicting emotions within her. She opened her mouth to speak, but found that no words would come. She had no answer, or perhaps too many, and none would bridge the chasm that now lay between them. Rowan stared into Lauren's darkening eyes, an unnerving shade of red glowing back at her. The intensity scared her, but she was beyond the point of pulling away now. You don't get to ask me that question, she finally said, her voice wavering. Not after you abandoned us. My brother died, Lauren. He died, and you weren't there. We needed you. I needed you. Tears pooled in her eyes, spilling over her cheeks. She looked away, ashamed of her vulnerability, but unwilling to hide it any longer. Her words struck him harder than any physical blow could. Lauren's eyes locked onto Rowan's tear-streaked face. For a moment, he allowed himself to drown in the complex swirl of emotions. Guilt, love, a longing for redemption he knew he didn't deserve. I'm sorry, he whispered, though he knew the words were grossly inadequate. I'm so, so sorry, Rowan. Sorry doesn't bring Mark back, Rowan choked out. And it doesn't erase what you've become. But I need to know why, Lauren. Why did you stay away? Why did you choose this monstrous life over us? His eyes still glowing dark red, Lauren tried to formulate an answer. It's not that I chose this life, he said slowly, but rather it chose me. Once I changed, I couldn't bear the thought of harming any of you. I thought by staying away, I was protecting you. Rowan looked at him, her eyes searching his face for any trace of the man she once knew. I loved you, Lauren. God, I think I still do, but I don't know how to love this, what you are now. The words hung heavily in the air, a tangible thing between them. Love was never supposed to be this complicated, this fraught with peril and moral ambiguity. Yet here they were, two souls bound by a dark tapestry of fate and choices, neither entirely right nor entirely wrong. Rowan felt the weight of their shared history and the uncertainty of their future descend upon her, as Lauren simply sat there, looking as lost and tormented as she felt. Loren pulled Rowan close, holding her against him as she sobbed. The sensation was different now, cold, no longer the warm embrace he remembered. 
Yet the weight of her body against his, the way she fit into his arms, was hauntingly familiar. He could hear her cries but couldn't feel her warmth, couldn't listen to the comforting rhythm of her heartbeat. Realities that served as stark reminders of the barriers now between them. She wept a rush of emotions. Emotions he shouldn't be capable of feeling in his current state. Flooded him. It was as though in that moment the monstrous part of him retreated just enough to let the man in him grieve for what had been lost. For what he had done to her. To them. She cried not just for her brother Mark, for her family or even for herself. She cried for Lorraine too for what he was and what he had become. In that cold embrace, she mourned the absence of warmth, the unspoken words and the shared history that had been irrevocably altered. And yet, for a brief instant, she felt a flicker of something from him. It was as if the Lorenz she knew broke through, revealing a vulnerability, an anguish that mirrored her own. It made her wonder, could there still be something left of the man she had loved? And if so, at what cost could that sliver of humanity exist? The room was heavy with the weight of their unsaid words and undetermined future. Rowan's tears eventually subsided, leaving a silence that was filled with both tension and an odd sense of peace. For that brief moment, they were simply two lost souls seeking solace in a world neither fully understood anymore. Rowan looked up at Lauren, her eyes searching his as if trying to decipher the enigma he had become. Gathering her courage, she pressed her lips against his. It was their first kiss, a moment both had unconsciously deferred for so many years, cold yet intense. It was as if the kiss carried within it the essence of their complex relationship, a myriad of missed opportunities, unspoken words, and raw emotion. When they pulled away, the room seemed both smaller and infinitely larger, the silence filled with the electricity of their touch. I thought I lost you that night in the field, Rowan finally said, her voice a near whisper. You disappeared and something inside me broke. I was devastated, Lauren, but I had to hide it. My family, they knew. They knew I was in love with you. Mom and sister even asked me once why we never, you know. Lauren looked down, avoiding her eyes. The question she was asking was one he'd asked himself many times over the years. Why hadn't he confessed his feelings when they were younger? Why had he allowed so many years to pass filled with nothing but what-ifs? Why didn't you ever tell me, Lauren, back in high school before all this? Why didn't we ever cross that line? Rowan's voice tinged with desperation, as if knowing the answer would somehow rewrite the past and correct their fractured present. The room was fraught with a tension so palpable it could be cut with a knife. Lauren's silence was answer enough for the moment. A painful admission of the gulf that had always existed between them. The unanswered questions that could possibly remain unanswered forever. Lorenz sighed, finally lifting his eyes to meet Rowan's. For a long moment, he just looked at her, as if contemplating how to articulate a lifetime of regrets into a single explanation. I was scared, he admitted. Terrified, actually. Terrified of ruining the friendship we had, of complicating things, of not being good enough. I thought maybe if I said nothing, if I just let things be, then we could go on being friends forever. I guess I was trying to protect something, even if that meant missing out on something even better. His voice softened, tinged with regret and hindsight. And now, looking at what we've become, what I've become, I wonder if maybe it would have been better if I had ruined it. If maybe all the pain we've experienced now could have been avoided if I'd just taken that chance. Rowan's eyes never left his. The gaze was like a mirror, forcing him to confront himself, to confront them, and the lost possibilities that danced in the air between them. Let me ask you the same thing, Lauren finally said. Why didn't you ever say anything? Did you ever think about us, what we could be, beyond just friends? Rowan took a deep breath, almost as if bracing herself. Of course, I thought about it, Lauren, all the time. But I had the same fears. You were my best friend, my brother's best friend. What if confessing changed all of that? And then when Mark died, it just seemed like saying anything would be inappropriate, almost like a betrayal to his memory. I was trapped in this web of shoulds and shouldn'ts, and I couldn't see a way out. The room fell silent, each lost in their thoughts, contemplating the bittersweet tragedy of their mutual silence over the years. Both had been prisoners of their own fears, their own insecurities, and now, even though their feelings were out in the open, 
the complex web of their history was not so easily untangled. So, they sat there, the weight of their confessions heavy in the air, pondering the heartbreaking irony that even after saying all the things they'd kept hidden for so long, it may still be too late. As Rowan finally drifted off to sleep beside him, Lauren found himself staring at the ceiling, his thoughts racing as the room sank into an almost eerie stillness. He turned to look at her, her face serene in repose. Even with her newfound vampiric nature, she still looked so much like the Rowan he'd known and loved for years. His mind wandered back to a particular night during their high school years. They had been at the annual Fall Festival in Jonestown, and somehow they'd gotten themselves lost in the corn maze. The sun had long set, and the night air had turned biting cold. They had wandered for what felt like hours, laughing nervously at first, but growing more anxious as time wore on. Finally, Lauren had draped his jacket over both of them, pulling Rowan close to share what little warmth they had left. His parents had found them eventually, but for those few moments under his jacket, Lauren had felt his heart racing in his chest. He could recall that night in vivid detail, the thrill of their closeness, the way Rowan had fit so naturally in his arms, the way her heart had raced alongside his. So it was a moment of pure, undiluted emotion, free from the complications that plagued their relationship now. A sharp pang of sorrow hit him as he realized just how much had changed. His heart no longer beat. Rowan no longer exuded the warmth that had once comforted him. That primal human connection they had once shared, that beautiful simplicity, had been irrevocably altered. His new nature, his monstrous nature, had taken that from him, from them. Lorraine shifted slightly, careful not to disturb Rowan's sleep, as he stared blankly into the darkness that enveloped the room. He thought about the feelings he just confessed, feelings he'd kept locked away for so long and how utterly complicated they had become. The emotional landscape between them was now a minefield, fraught with new dangers, new uncertainties, new sorrows. If he could feel his heart, Lauren knew it would be aching in that moment. The room felt colder, emptier, despite Rowan's presence beside him. He wondered if they could ever find a way to navigate this new world they found themselves in or if the divide between them had grown too vast to have a bridge. As he lay there, Lauren mourned the loss of their shared warmth, the heartbeat that had once echoed his own, the simple human experiences that they would never share again. It was a painful sort of irony. The more he wanted to keep her close, the further apart they seemed to drift. And so with those bittersweet memories playing like an old film reel in his mind, Lauren too finally succumbed to sleep.